Yeah, I've actually come to some sort of uh, revelation quite a while ago, but I don't think I've written about it much, that if you look at the research, the research is simply very mixed. If you look at the Russian literature, it's clear, it's very clear, not just in one study, but in multiple studies, that high reps target the type 1 fibers more, low reps target the type 2 fibers more. And then the American literature was like one or two studies found a trend, and then there was basically no finding, no finding, no finding, no difference, no difference, even in studies of very different designs. So then people are like, yeah, okay, I think it's just complete BS, and the Russian literature just doesn't make any sense. Uh, but then we got the study showing with blood flow restriction training, we can actually induce type 1 specific muscle fiber hypertrophy, which is also interesting because blood flow restriction is, you could kind of think, well, it's you're restricting blood flow, so it's more anaerobic. So surely it's the type 2 fibers that grow more because they don't need oxygen. Um, but no, it seems to be still the type 1 fibers that you grow more still. The fact the, the longer duration, longer time on attention and the like seem to and lack of recovery, probably also of the type two fibers. And then I was looking at the studies and reading them again, and it dawned on me, what do the Russian studies and blood flow restriction type training have in common? Very limited relaxation. Because the Russian studies all used, no re they call it like no relaxation training, or that's the English translation closest to the Russian. The, so they're, they're kind of keeping the tension on the muscle and not pausing, whereas the American studies, they typically use normal tempos, which actually in studies, they probably use quite slow tempos, artificially slow, I would say, like four second eccentric. You read that on paper, you're like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. And then you do it, try doing a four second eccentric. You're like, oh my God, this takes yeah. forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's the no relaxation part that's making the difference. And that means basically, yeah, high reps can probably stimulate type one dominant uh, or preferential muscle growth in the type one fibers. If you're kind of keeping the tension on the muscle and doing like pump work. So that's, and then the question is, is there still some difference between like a normal 30 RM and a 5 RM? Maybe. Um, I think you'd have to go into the range of like one to three RM, max 5 RM to, to get type two preferential growth. Um, we, maybe then it's more that the time and attention is too short for the type one fibers rather than that it's better for the type two fibers. So. I don't think that's like a winning scenario. But yeah, that, that might be a way we can achieve it. I think the main thing, uh, my main, the other thing I uh, learned about it or my change in my practice is that I quite quickly abandoned the idea of my, uh, what I read, my original articles. I thought based on like Poliquin and Thibodeau, it really was my first article actually that I wrote publicly. Um, I was like pretty big on muscle fiber specific hypertrophy. I thought it would be like, uh, that was all the rage at the time and the theory clearly it, like, it makes a lot of theoretical sense, uh, but it just doesn't really pan out in the research. And it was like, like I said, no finding after no finding. So I quite quickly abandoned the idea that it was like really important. But then we had other findings showing it does, like your muscle fiber type, if you read, for example, uh, Epstein's The Sports Gene, uh, it's really interesting how top level coaches and the like saw big differences in the training practices required for the sprinters and the marathon runners. And if they used different methods for that they used for the marathon runners, they used it on the sprinters and they would get injured, they would get hurt, uh, they couldn't recover. And um, so that suggested there, there is clearly something going on. And then there's other research showing, yeah, muscle fiber type percentage barely influences the how many reps you can do at a given percentage of one RM. But things like capillary density do. And um, some people conclude that, okay, yeah, so muscle fiber typing doesn't matter, but then it doesn't, maybe capillary density is also important. So it's, it's just a different mechanism, but it still means that different rep ranges might have different effects, if not on muscle hypertrophy directly, then on recovery times. We also have a study showing that specifically in the type 2 fibers or people with more type 2 fibers or muscles with more type 2 fibers, if they did high reps, their recovery time was longer. Um, but if they did low reps, it didn't matter. So that would basically mean that if you're super fast switch dominant, you're going to have a hard time, which is also kind of what these coaches found. You're going to have a hard time um, doing high rep work because it's going to destroy you. So I think based on these things, it, like my methods basically always been to use percentages rather than, I won't say 8RM, I'll say 80% of 1RM. Okay. And then... 
if somebody can do 12 reps, okay, maybe you have more time on fibers, maybe it's because you have more capillaries, maybe you just really hate low reps and you like high reps. Whatever the cause, I think most literature errs on people getting better strength training adaptations from the training that they are better at, regardless of whether it is, whether they like it more, whether they're genetically suited for it. So I think the methods kind of still make sense, but the rationale has changed a lot.